Hi, I'm George Woodbury from College of the Sequoias in Visalia, California, and in this video I'm going to go over how to solve quadratic equations. In particular, we're going to take a look at trying to pick the best approach depending on the individual equation. Let's begin. The uh, first thing you always want to look for is to see if you can solve by factoring. Because if you can factor the quadratic expression once it's set equal to zero, it's really easy to get the solutions from there. Now this quadratic does factor to be x plus 2 times x minus 5. I break this into two equations, x plus 2 equals 0 or x minus 5 equals 0. Uh, solve the first by subtracting 2, solve the second by adding 5, and so we find that our two solutions are negative 2 and 5. If you can factor quickly, uh, it's definitely the best way to go. I recommend using a five second rule. If you can factor it within five seconds, you should. If you can't, then it's time to start thinking about a different technique. Let's try another. x squared plus 9x plus 14 equals 0. It's already equal to 0. So we wanted to see if this expression can be factored. Uh, it can. x plus 7 times x plus 2 equals 0 break it into two equations, x plus 7 equals 0 or x plus 2 equals 0, subtract 7 from the first, subtract 2 uh, in the second, and our solution set negative 7, negative 2. All right. Um, here we have a squared expression equal to a number. If your equation only contains one squared expression, and the rest of the terms are, are all constants, then you want to take a look at extracting square roots. The idea here is to isolate the squared expression, take the square root of both sides, and solve from there. Right. So here, this one, uh, the square term is already isolated, so I can take the square root of both sides, the square root of x minus 5 squared and the square root of 36 on the right. Now when we take the square root of both sides we're going to use plus or minus in front of the square root of the constant. Uh, it has to do with absolute values. Uh, the square root of the square will just simplify to be x minus 5 and that's going to equal to plus or minus. The square root of 36 is 6. Now I'm going to add 5 over to the right hand side. So I've got 5 plus or minus 6. The first solution comes from 5 plus 6, that's 11. The second comes from 5 minus 6, that's negative 1. So our solution set negative 1 and 11. A similar idea here. We have one squared term, a constant term, and another constant term. There's no term containing the single variable x, the linear term, we would say. So we want to solve this by extracting roots. I'm going to subtract 13 from both sides. Uh, x plus 3 squared equals negative 24. Now it looks just like the one we just did, right? Square root of both sides. Uh, the left side will simplify just to be x plus 3. And we want to work on the square root of negative 24. The negative sign tells me that I'm going to have an i as part of my solution. And then I want to work on the square root of 24. Well, the square root of 24 uh, equals 2 square root of 6 because 24 is 4 times 6 and I know the square root of 4 is 2. So putting that all together, I get plus or minus 2i square root 6. And then I subtract 3, putting it in front of the plus or minus sign. Uh, so we have negative 3 minus 2i root 6 and negative 3 plus 2i root 6. Uh, back to our standard quadratic. Um, Let's think about factoring. Well, the only two numbers that multiply to 7 are 1 and 7, and I can't get that middle term with those two, so it doesn't factor. 
Um, there are times where you should think about completing the square, but uh, even though the leading coefficient is a 1, I don't think that completing the square is a good idea because the coefficient of the linear term is also 1, and that's odd. And it doesn't really set up well for completing the square. So now we're going to go ahead and just uh, use our default quadratic formula. A is 1, B is 1, and C is 7. We're going to substitute that, that into the quadratic formula. It's the opposite of B, so that's negative 1, plus or minus the square root of B squared, that's 1 squared, minus 4 times A, which is 1, times C, which is 7, all over 2A, which is 2 times 1. Uh, let's simplify this a little. Negative 1 plus or minus the radicand is negative 27. The denominator is simply 2. Uh, for the square root of negative 27, I know that I'm going to have an i in the mix here. 27 is 9 times 3, so I can get a 3 out with a 3 left in. So it's plus or minus 3i root 3, all divided by 2. I can't reduce this fraction. I can't combine the numerators because there's an i. I also can't do it because there's a square root as well. So I'm ready to write the solution set. Negative 1 minus 3i root 3 over 2. And negative 1 plus 3i root 3 over 2. Uh, problem 6. Here, um, we want to think about factoring first, and so we've got to get that into standard form by subtracting 12, x squared plus 8x minus 12 equals 0. However, uh, it looks like this might factor. It does not. I'm going to go back to the form I had it in. This is set up perfectly for completing the square. We have the variable terms isolated on the left-hand side, constant on the right. Uh, the coefficient for x squared is simply 1 and the coefficient of the linear term is even. That means it's set up perfectly for completing the square. Um, to complete the square, we have to take that coefficient of 8, divide it by 2, and square it. We'll add this number to both sides. Well, 8 divided by 2 is 4, and 4 squared is 16. So I'm going to add 16 to both sides. Uh, factor the left side. Uh, that factor is to be x plus 4 times x plus 4, or x plus 4 squared, equal to 28. And now we can solve by extracting square roots. Square root of the left side equals plus or minus the square root of the side containing the constant. The left side simply becomes x plus 4. Uh, let's see, square root of 28. 28 is the same as 4 times 7. And I know the square root of 4 is 2. So I have plus or minus 2 root 7. And I finish by subtracting the 4 from both sides. So our solution set, negative 4 minus 2 root 7, negative 4 plus 2 root 7. Uh, by the way, sometimes uh, your instructor or your book will ask you to round this to a certain place. At this point, you want to use the calculator to do that. Uh, all right. This one looks a lot different than what we've seen before. Uh, we have an exponent that's bigger than 2. This is set up perfectly for a u substitution approach. Um, if you take a look at the variable parts of the first two terms, the first variable part is the square of the second variable part. And so if we let u equal x squared, we can make this a quadratic equation. Uh, u squared then would equal x squared squared, which is x to the fourth. That tells me that x to the fourth can be replaced by u squared. Uh, x squared can be replaced by u. And now I have a quadratic equation in terms of u. Let me slide this over to the left. I'll need some more room in a minute. Uh, factoring this, u plus 9 times u minus 4 equals 0. This first one leads me to the solution u equals negative 9. The second 
leads me to u equals 4. Okay. Just like we did before, u plus 9 equals 0, subtract 9. u minus 4 equals 0, add 4. We need to unsubstitute uh, by replacing u with x squared. We use the same substitution in reverse. All right, so let's start over again up here. If I have x squared equals negative 9, I can solve this by taking the square root of both sides. All right. Think about uh, we have a square. To get rid of a square, we take the square root. Square root of x squared is just x. The square root of negative 9 is 3i. So x equals plus or minus 3i give us two solutions. x squared equals 4. Again, I don't want x squared. I want just x. To get rid of the square, I take the square root of both sides. Remember, every time you take the square root, we'll use plus or minus. And the square root of 4 is 2. So our four solutions are negative 3i, 3i, negative 2, and 2. Uh, one place where students have a lot of trouble is they can get to this point okay, but we have to know how to solve for x from there. If we have x squared, we take the square root. Here's another u substitution problem. If we look at the variable part of this middle term, if we square that, we get the variable part of the first term. We're set up perfectly for a u substitution. Let's let u equal the square root of x. u squared equals x. So I have u squared minus 3u minus 18 equals 0. Uh, this factors to be u plus 3 times u minus 6 equals 0. This gives me u equals negative 3 and that factor will end up giving us u equals 6. Now we're going to substitute in the reverse, uh, replace u by the square root of x. So we have the square root of x equals negative 3 or the square root of x equals 6. This is a problem. The square root of a number can never be negative. So this branch won't lead to any solutions. If we squared both sides we would get x equals 9 and if we check that in the original equation, it wouldn't work. But it's better to pick that off ahead of time than have to go back and check after. Now for this one, we have the square root of x. We want to square both sides to get rid of that square root. And we have x equals 36. Now, anytime you square both sides of the equation, you can have extraneous roots, so we should check that solution. If I plug in 36 for x, have that equation. Uh, the square root of 36 is 6. 3 times 6 is 18, so I have 36 minus 18 minus 18, and that does equal 0. So 36 is a valid solution. Okay, One last problem here. This is a quadratic in hiding. It doesn't look quadratic, but it's a rational equation. I have a denominator of x that I'd like to clear uh, the only denominator is x, so that is our common denominator. I'm going to multiply both sides of the equation by x. On the left-hand side, I distribute x to get x squared plus 13x. On the right side, the x's will cancel, divide out to equal 30, subtract the thir 30 over to get this in standard form, uh, does this factor use the five second rule? It does. It's x plus 15 times x minus 2. Uh, it leads to a solution of negative 15 or positive 2. Since neither of these two solutions make a denominator 0, they're both valid. So our solution set is negative 15 comma 2. Okay, I hope that was helpful for you. Uh, again, always think about what is the best strategy for this equation. Don't always feel like you have to use quadratic formula. If you got any questions or comments on these problems, 
or if you have a request for a video that I can put together for you on YouTube, you can reach me through the contact page on my website, and the address for that is georgewoodbury.com. Thanks, and good luck.